But in the darkness of that night, Caspar, Melquire, and Balthazar, with their extra laden camel, eluded Herod's pursuers. The wise men rode by an inside lane on to Bethlehem, as if there was nothing in the world of human cunning that wise men had to fear. They found the town, the inn, the stable. They knelt, and their eyes were full of worshipful glory as they gazed upon Mary's baby. Then the wise men embraced Joseph, kissed his beard, and bowed ceremoniously. Having bestowed their gifts, they departed from the stable, but not to return to Jerusalem. The waiting Herod was never to see them again. Having bedded down at another inn, all three magi went promptly to sleep and dreamt the same dream. Because of that dream, they rose in the middle of the night and got away on their camels, completely outwitting several searching bands from the palace. By another way, they headed for their own country and so, obedient to their own vision, they jogged out of history, never to reappear. It was a night of dreams powerful in meaning. The visit of the wise men had come at a time when Mary and Joseph felt troubled and bewildered, for this was the night of the day that they had carried the baby to the temple. The incidents of the morning had been shocking to the simple-hearted family, and the terror of those two encounters lingered. The old man Simeon squeaking down the long range of pillared arches that at last he could die, having seen the face of the saviour of all the people of the world. And after Simeon, the fasting and praying widow of 84 years, Anna, who had crept out of the shadows of a marble pillar and called him the Redeemer. The dream that followed in Joseph's sleep was even more upsetting. Once again, the foster father of Jesus found himself face to face with the same bright angel that had come to his bedside in Nazareth and told him to marry Mary without distrust, for the child in her womb was miraculous. This time, the bright angel gave Joseph new instructions. Arise and take the child and his mother and fly into Egypt and be there until I shall tell you, for it will come to pass that Herod will seek the child to destroy him. But how? How to get to Egypt? It would take money to travel so far, and there are only a few coins left. It was a most tormented Joseph who stood in the dark stable thus early in the morning, accepting to the full the stern warning of his dream, yet penniless to obey what to do. Almost instantaneously he learned that there was nothing needed for him to do at all. The money for the long trip to Egypt was already provided, for now he saw moving toward him in the gloom the bent figure of his father-in-law, Jeho Yakim. He too could not sleep. He had busied himself usefully on packing the gifts the wise men had left for the child. Flask of perfume, Jeho Yakim whispered to his son-in-law, frankincense and the most perfect of all, an ointment made from olive oil, sweetened with spices, fragrant gums, odors of pressed flowers. And in the second package, another stuff called myrrh. They told me it was an aromatic gum taken from a thorn tree. Joseph laid a hand on the shoulder of his father-in-law. Jehoiakim, he sighed, we have now to think of other matters. And this third gift, the old man mumbled on, is the smallest and the heaviest of all the wise men's bounty. Guess what is in this bundle, Joseph? What, father-in-law?